He is the host of Million Dollar Mile. That'll be making its debut tonight at 9 Eastern on CBS. He's the host, and what you have, uh, you have people running through the streets of Los Angeles trying to run a mile and win a million dollars. But there are 10 defenders, six men and four women, charged with trying to stop the contestants from taking home that grand prize. We welcome in uh, Tim Tebow, who's also in the Mets organization and I believe AAA, which we'll get to coming up in a moment. How would you do as a contestant on Million Dollar Mile? I don't know that I would do too great. I think I'm too much in baseball shape right now, not in obstacle course racing shape. So I would have to train for a little bit. But, I, I, I mean, these our defenders are just world-class athletes that they do this all the time and they make it look really easy. Okay, Tim Tebow, the football player in this, let's say seven years ago, how would you do on it? I, I'd be a little bit better. I think I, I think I could hold my own a little bit, but winning the million, I, I don't know. I, I think it would be pretty hard. But I'll tell you what, we had some epic finishes, um, <laughs> which I think is different about this, too, than some of the other shows. Is It's, you know, mano a mano um, down to the finish line, and that's pretty that's pretty cool. Do you get a, a call from LeBron as the executive producer to host this? How does that work? Well, actually, I've been um, friends with LeBron since I was a Bronco, and they would come play the Nuggets, and we got to know each other a little bit then. And so when this project you know, came up with, um, with LeBron and his partner Maverick and CBS, um, yeah, it was just some conversations that we had, and it was something that I, I really was passionate about and liked. And, and, you know, I love competition. And so, you know, I, once I kind of understood the premise, um, it was something that really intrigued me. And so I was, I was on one board. But you're going to get to a point where you're going to have more of these opportunities, but you're still playing baseball. Like, when do, when do you make a decision on, do I want to do more TV stuff or I want to continue to play baseball? Can you do both? Well, yeah, for, for me, it was definitely baseball first, but we were able to film this in the fall and make everything work, so it made sense for me. Um, it only took a, a, you know, a little under three weeks to be able to film, so oh. every, we filmed every night. Every day I would train at the University of Southern Cal, and so just time management and prioritized it and was able to do what I needed to do. Where are you going to be playing minor league baseball this year? Start now in Syracuse, uh, the Mets Triple A team. Nice. And um, so it might be a little cold to start the season here in a couple of weeks, but um, I'm excited about it. And um, you know, one step closer. Um, but it'll be um, it'll be a bit great challenge. Your uh, evolution as a baseball player, let's say three years ago to now, what what's the biggest thing that you've improved upon? Oh my goodness! I think every area. Um, you know. I think outfield, getting jumps, um, obviously hitting. Um, it's, you know, I think in every area, I feel like even from last year to now, I've made jumps in a lot of areas, just making it more natural, being able to play the game a little bit easier and relaxed. And um, it's just, you know, when you take 12 years off a game, there's some things that just don't come as easy and natural. So I think it's being able to get as many reps as you can. Um, at certain things so that you can play fast. If you started at 20 playing baseball, finish that sentence. <laughs> I think it would have been, um, you know, some of the challenges wouldn't have been as, as hard. And um, I think you would have had more time for it. But, you know, what? I love this journey that I've taken. It's been um, so unique and um, a lot of people, you know, you know, I thought I was crazy when I did it, but you know what? I'm someone that I pursue what I love, and this is something that I love. That I've enjoyed every step of the way, and so it doesn't matter what the end of the sentence is, whether that's finishing as a big leaguer or triple A, whatever it is, I get to do something that I loved. He's Tim Tebow, of course, uh, the Million Dollar Mile. It will make its debut tonight at 9 Eastern on CBS. Do you know your walk-up song when you get called up by the Mets? When that first time you go to the plate? Well, the last few years, um, but I, I'm, I'm gonna get on it. What do you got? Do you got any good thoughts for me? Oh my goodness. Um. Well, what kind of music do you like? 
Southern music, country music. Uh, yeah, of course, all of it, a little bit of everything. Well, you haven't thought of your walk-up song. Not for this season yet. I, I kind of have a new one every year. So, I mean, I figured you'd have a good one for me. <laughs> um, man, I'd have to give that some thought, though. Maybe okay. fl- I, I got one for it. Florida Georgia Line. That would be the band. Yeah. And that's you. I like Florida Georgia Line. Yeah, so that's you. So I got to come up with a song from Florida Georgia. Maybe they'll make one for you. They'll record one for you. Maybe they will. Perfect. The, the Ballad of Tim Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, 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 I like where your head's at. I was also wondering, if you came out of college now with today's NFL and today's star, is it more, uh, would you be more acclimated for success in the NFL today with its game and how, you know, it's everything is read option and you have, you know, quick quick throws? Or was the league more suited for your style when you first came in? No, I think now it would be a lot more suited for uh, for more of a dual threat quarterback and someone that plays the way um, that I did. I, I think in, in so many aspects. I remember one of the big conversations was, well, he was never under center at Florida, but you, you, I mean that's a question you never hear anymore yeah. uh, about quarterbacks. Because most of the NFL were all on the shotgun, and and I think we were able to help um, you know change the game into the way it is now, and um, you know be because it just puts so much pressure on teams. You see more and more teams going to the spread, more of a read option. And um, I think I would be much more, um, you know, able to fit in a game um, nowadays, just the way that I play. Um, but I'm also grateful that I got to help, you know, put pressure on the game to to adapt, and so many teams did. Um, you know, with Cam coming in and Kaepernick and, and – um, you know, that that was just a, a time where you didn't see it. No one thought there could be a read option there. But then, you know, when, when you would have the chance of being able to, to show it and, you know, put pressure on defenses, the, the game adapts. But you also, you know, Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, uh, you know, the, the whole position, it used to be you had to be 6'4 and be 225 pounds and have a great arm. You know, now it's just open to interpretation of what a coach That's thinks right. his offense can be, which is unique and it's great. I think for the NFL, it is. I, I think it's great as well. Um, and that's also the way that I look at the position. If you can, if you can win, if you can make the players around you better, if you're dynamic, if you have, um, if you scare the defense, like you know, why, you don't have to look the same. You don't have to be, you know, six four. Um, and, and looked apart. There was a whole lot of quarterbacks that looked apart that never won games. And now I think they're finding people that, that maybe look a little bit different, but they're winners and they bring unique things to the table. And I think you're going to give yourself just more of a chance to win that way. Um, you know, and I'm also someone that, you know, I like finding people that found a way to win in Pop Warner high school, college, because they're probably going to also find a way to win in the NFL. And ultimately it's about winning games. And you, did you reach out to Kyler Murray or did he reach out to you? Um, we had the chance to, to get to know each other through I am through that. He's a, he's a great kid. There's been so much pressure on him this this year. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that I tried to, to share with Kyler was, you know, between baseball and football is, you know, make the right decision for you. Um, you know, think through it, pray through it, but don't don't make what's best for your agent or even your family members as much as, you know, you want to. Make the right decision for you and, and whatever is on your heart because um, that's what's most important. What happens first? You get married or you get called up by the Mets? <laughs> that's a really good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, hopefully, hopefully caught up, but I, I'm not sure. Well, plan your wedding for November, just to be safe, because I you're going to get called up at some point. You're going to get well, called up. I, I appreciate that. I tell you what, every day we work as hard as we can, and whether whether or not that happens, it'll um, still be a really fun year, and, and blessed to be able to play a game I love. 
uh, I'm moving into a new studio. I don't have any Tim Tebow memorabilia here. How about... Dude, we got to fix some of that. Okay, like how about this? this? What is it that you'd like? The bat from your first home run that you hit this year. <laughs> the bat from the first home run? Yeah. I can do that. Okay. I mean, I'm thinking, right. I don't want to put pressure on you. You got Pawtucket coming up next week, and I think you can take them deep, so... I scouted them out. I scouted them out for you, Tim. I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think those middle right, relievers good. a little spotty. So I'm thinking a sixth inning shot. So uh, and then perfect. Yeah, and then we'll uh, we'll frame the bat, and put it in the uh, new man cave. I can't wait. Hey, let's go, uh, Tucky. Here we come. Man. Yeah, yeah. We'll treat them like they're the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, good, good luck with the show tonight, and uh, hopefully uh, it'll be leading to few. Uh, few more of these uh, situations able to host. So uh, good to catch up with you. Thanks as always. You too. Great talking with you. Have a wonderful day. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.